Dobro večer i dobrodošli. Da se predstavimo, moj ime je Petar Stanić. I ja sam jedan od idejnih tvoraca i osnivača te kredičke inicijative 99% ili jedne ideje koja se zalaže za uvođenje direktno demokratskog društva uređenja, društvenog uređenja u Srbiji. Ovo što danas radim je prikaz toga kako direktno demokratija treba da izgleda. To treba da budu ovakve tribine, moći ljudi da iznose svoje inicijative na kojima ćemo mi kasnije da glasamo putem interneta i te inicijative pretvaramo u delo. Tema današnje tribine je su održive zajednice. I u sklopu održivih zajednica javni prevoz kojem nije dat ni približno potreban jedna važnost kako ono zaslužuje. Možda promiš baš. Znači, kao zemlja, voda, vazduh i sve ostalo što spada u dome zajedničkog dobra, javni prevoz je zajedničko dobro. On je stvoren da bi se mi prebacili s mesta na mesto, mi koji nemamo automobile, prebacili s jednog mesta na drugu u najbržim, najkraće mogućem vremenu i pod najekonomičnijim uslovima. Da. Ono što možda, ne znam da li znate ili ne znate, je da sektor transporta potroši jednu trećinu svih natnih ovih proizvoda u jednoj zemlji. Javni prevoz potroši velike deo toga, a mnogo manje nego što privatni automobili potroši. Ta jedna trećina se meri na globalnom nivou u trilionima eura, dolara, ne znam ja čega. Znači ogromne svote novca koje čak ne znam da napišu. S toga idemo dalje. Ovo su potrebne javnog prevoza naši u Beogradu za energenti. Nedeljne potrebne su oko milijona i dvesta hiljada litera naftnih derivata. I više. Ovo su grube procene. To je godišnja potrošnja oko 63 milijona litera. Puta euro i po. Dolazimo u cifru od 100 milijona euro godišnje. Pazite, ovo što pričamo o javnom transportu u Beogradu, pričam o gradovima u celoj Srbiji. Ovo se ne odnosi samo za Beograd. Odnosi se na celu Srbiju. Ista priča treba da se pokrene, ako su ljudi naravno dovoljno svesni i savesni, u svim gradovima Srbije. Da ja ne bi dužio priču, sad ćemo vam pustiti jedan kratak film o tome kako se javni prevoz u Švedskoj finansira i snabdeva derivatima potrebnim za njegovo pokrete. Paša, molim te, ne, ne, vrati, vrati nazad, pardon, s tim je tamo, ne, ne. Sve ja sam u kod. Ovdje samo klikni. Bravo. The use of fossil fuels for heating and transportation should decrease and ultimately cease completely. In the long run, the municipality of Kristianstad aims to become independent of fossil fuels. Using locally produced biogas as a vehicle fuel will help us to become less dependent on fossil fuels. As opposed to petrol and diesel, biogas does not contribute to the greenhouse effect since it is a renewable source of energy that is recycled naturally. A part of kitchen refuse can be recycled to produce biogas. Everybody helps out by sorting the refuse into special containers. The organic waste is collected and transported to the biogas plant in Karpalund outside of Kristianstad.
Kristianstad is a rich agricultural region, and the area also hosts several large food industries. Biogas can be produced from the large quantities of organic waste that is generated. Organic waste from both private households and the food industry is digested in the Carpaloon biogas plant, along with manure from local farms. Digestion is a natural process whereby bacteria degrade organic material in the absence of oxygen. During the digestion process, a gas consisting of 70% methane and 30% carbon dioxide is produced. The methane gas produced in this way is called biogas, as opposed to fossil natural gas extracted from the interior of the earth. In addition to biogas, a residue is produced by the degradation process. This residue is returned to agricultural land as fertilizer. The residue is nutrient rich and can replace commercial fertilizers. The production of biogas is an important link between food consumption and production, contributing to a sustainable recycling of nutrients and energy. Sludge is also used to produce biogas at the Municipal Wastewater Treatment Plant in Kristenstad. The wastewater is purified and the sludge is degraded to biogas. In other words, what we flush down the toilet becomes useful energy. The greatest environmental benefit is obtained when biogas replaces petrol and diesel as a vehicle fuel, since the emissions of substance hazardous to humans is negligible. Biogas that is not used as a vehicle fuel is used to produce heat and electricity. In order to use biogas as a vehicle fuel, the energy value must be increased by upgrading the methane content to 97%. After upgrading, the gas is compressed. Vehicles can then be filled up just as quickly as filling up with petrol or diesel. In the year 2005, the total potential biogas production in Kristianstad can supply about 1,500 cars, 25 buses, and 10 heavy gas vehicles. Biogas is presently used as a fuel for all the city buses in Kristianstad. Several taxi companies and other private companies have also chosen biogas vehicles. When the municipality and the hospital established carpools, the natural choice was biogas. The local municipality and even other organizations now buy biogas-driven vehicles, request these when they purchase transport services, for example, school buses. Private people are showing increasing interest in biogas as a fuel. Advantages include the environmental aspects and a lower fuel price. Gas-driven vehicles can be used even when there are no gas-filling stations at present, since most are equipped with two separate tanks for gas and petrol, so-called bi-fuel. In collaboration with the local municipality, one of the local power companies has established several filling stations in Kristianstad. New stations are currently being built in many places across Sweden. The municipality aims to increase biogas production in order to supply more gas vehicles to further improve the environment. We will accomplish this by building more upgrading plants and more filling stations and by treating more organic material. The vehicle of the future runs on biogas. What does your car run on?